Hello and welcome to this week's Indie Miners with the new album from Broken Bells, Into the Blue. BJ, how are you? Very good, mate. So this is from the Broken Bells, that of James Mercer and Danger Mouse. They've been together for a little while now, obviously James Mercer from The Shins, Danger Mouse, who seems to be the producer that is in demand by almost everyone of all types of styles. This is their third album, so we haven't heard from them from an album since 2014. They have released a few singles in that time. We have nine songs, 41 minutes, so I'm glad that they cut the songs and cut the minutes slightly. I think 41's okay from a from a size point of view. And I guess the thing that um, we haven't seen from this album is that the two singles, particularly in 2018, 2019, have been cut from the album, which I was a little bit disappointed with, to be quite honest. I thought Good Luck was one of my favourite songs from 2019. So... From a, a Spotify point of view, and just sort of comparing the three albums, we can see that there's a lot of traits of the three albums that are very, very similar. So energy, liveliness, and the vocal phrasing are all fairly much trademarks of the Broken Bells, but also the Shins as well. Um, dance ability and instrumentation are the things that did change a little bit. So it's a little bit more nuanced than maybe the previous albums, and that's that's coming through on the data that we received. But if you wanted to describe the album, it's almost like the Shins album Port of Morrow with a bit of Danger Mouse sprinkled in there, Al. So that's, uh, I guess, my synopsis of what you're hearing, which is very, very good. And if you do like this album, you should check out the album Lucifer on the Sofa by Spoon. We've done a review of that, so we've got a link at the end of this episode. So again, if you like this album, you should check out that album or also the review of it. Fantastic, mate. Now, look, in terms of looking at the particular tracks off the album and the way it flows, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, I've been a, a Broken Bells fan for, fan for a while, more of a Shins fan. I love James Mercer's work. I didn't know what I was going to expect from this album because, to be honest, I didn't listen to the second album very much, but the first album I loved. I loved High Road um, from their, their first album, and this album in particular the first four or five tracks is fantastic the first song into the blue james mercer's vocals towards the end as well as the mixing just sounds absolutely fantastic some other highlights for me off the album is a slower song uh, love off the love on the run as well as a track towards the end the chase which is a real highlight for me finishing off the album also want to give saturdays a mention as well i know that's a particular favorite of yours bj I'm going to give it four stars out of five. I'd be interested in your thoughts on what you think the album Into the Blue will get. Yeah, look, I really enjoyed this particular album. Um, I thought that it was a lot more nuanced, I think, than some of his previous albums. You probably don't see Danger Mouse's influence in this album compared to the previous one. So, so I guess in terms of... Um, some of the songs like um, Invisible Exit and Love on the Run, they're showing Mercer's vulnerabilities, which he seems to do very well with the shins. Um, I really enjoy Saturdays. It's, a, it's very much a psychedelic type of uh, trip. They they pull it off really easily. It, it seems to just come out um, effortlessly. I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if that song didn't take a long time for them to write. Um, I, I thought that... Just reflecting on James Mercer, like I was surprised to see that he's 51 years old. So he's only a year younger than Weezer's Rivers Kumo and three years younger than Billy Corgan. And I think the surprising thing to me is he's a little bit of a late bloomer in terms of coming on the scene with the shins originally back in 2001. But I, I feel as if, you know, at the age of 51, he certainly has still a lot to say with his career. Whereas the other two, I just don't feel as if they, they do. So look, if, if people disagree with me, please feel free to let me know in the comments. But I feel as if I'd take this particular album over Weezer's and the Smashing Pumpkins album any day of the week. So finally, um, just for those who are listening, the biggest caveat that I have with this is that it does sound a lot more like a Shins album than the Broken Bells. 
the Danger Mouse's influence isn't quite as much, I feel, as the first album in particular. That's not a bad thing, but if people are wanting and inspecting uh, some of his trickery, what he can do with a lot of his, uh, his all of his instruments and his producing techniques, they might be slightly disappointed by it. But overall, this is a really good listen and one I, I definitely recommend. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's probably going to make my top 10 albums of 2022. In terms of the pendulum swinging between Mr. Mouse and Mr. Mercer, I'm actually quite a fan that it's in the direction of James Mercer more. But I think all in all, it's a four-star album, solid, worth a listen for sure. That was Indie Miners reviewing the new album from Broken Bells, Into the Blue. That wraps up another episode of Indie Miners. Please look to subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, and let us know if there's an album you would like us to look at. So until next time, bye for now, and thank you for watching.